Hey guys welcome to a new video, like comment and subscribe if you enjoy. Without any further interruptions, enjoy the what if. Chapter 3. Konoha Business. Naruto slumped against a tree and sat down as he saw Jiraiya talking to Maida Guy, with Sasuke over his shoulder. Itachi had really done a number on that kid and Naruto knew it was mostly his fault, but defended himself with the fact that Sasuke either didn't notice or didn't care that Itachi was in such a pissy mood. And what kind of genin tries to stay and fight Itachi Uchiha by choice? Itachi looked pissed off when he beat Sasuke too, Naruto called his bad on that. Naruto had gotten his ass saved by Sasuke's assistance, and he knew it. It had given Jiraiya enough time to find him and drive the nuke nin duo off before they could refocus on him. Thank goodness the old sage could back up all of that posturing with skill. Gaki, come over here. Naruto stood and walked over to Jiraiya and Guy. While he was pissed off at Jiraiya he had to admit, without his timely interference he would have gotten turned into hamburger. Guy gave Naruto a blinding smile as he got close, Yash Naruto-kun, you have certainly shown yourself to be quite flushed with the power of youth today. Holding off those two like you did. Naruto looked at Guy strangely, thanks Guy-san. I was useless though, they could have killed me whenever they wanted, they needed me alive. Guy shook his head, smile still in place, and you are alive are you not? And that means you have another day to get stronger. Another day to prepare yourself and make sure this doesn't happen again. Naruto smiled faintly, you're right. I need to worry about getting ready for the next time something like this happens. Naruto clinched his fists, there's no way that guys like that are going to get the drop on me ever again. Guy shifted Sasuke on his shoulders, well I do hope that you two are successful in your mission, we could use her expertise for more than just Sasuke-kun here. Kakashi got hit as well. Naruto looked at Guy. Kakashi made eye contact. Guy nodded and began reaching for something on his person. Jiraiya grabbed Naruto by his shoulder, we should go kid. We'll lose the trail if we stay after all of this. Naruto grunted as Jiraiya pulled him away, uh, later Guy-san. Tell Rock Lee, and Tenten I said hi. Guy gave him a thumbs up and a smile in return before turning to blaze a trail back to Konoha. Naruto noticed Jiraiya was hurrying him away, why are you pulling me so fast Aero Senen? Jiraiya looked down and back out at the road ahead, he was going to give you one of those god-awful jumpsuits kid. There was no way I was letting you go back to such horrendous clothing after you just started looking decent. Naruto scoffed and slapped Jiraiya's hand off of his shoulder, don't touch me. You aren't off of the hook yet. You and the old man screwed me over, I'm a joke in Konoha these days because of what you guys did. Itachi and Kisame treated me like a piece of crap back there, and while it helped keep me alive and out of their hands, it was insulting. Naruto grumbled as he stomped down the road, I've got at least two s rank Nukenon after me and I'm a sitting duck if they decide to get serious on me. We seriously need to finish this mission so I can work on getting back up to snuff. Jiraiya shook his head as they traversed the roads. XXX. Naruto had calmed down over the course of the next few days. He was still incredibly testy due to still not finding any time to train himself properly. Jiraiya tried to placate him by saying he had proven himself to be far stronger than a genin should be. Naruto countered by blankly stating that he wasn't supposed to be a genin, he was Anbu level at 8. Jiraiya didn't like Naruto fretting over his skill level like this, but then he remembered what he met Naruto doing, infiltrating an unknown country. When he saw Naruto again at the hot springs years later he was rather underwhelmed. After taking the Gogyo Fuin off of Naruto and watching him immediately stand on water he wasn't surprised, he figured he subconsciously knew how to do it already. What had been done to him was a damn shame, and he had every right to be angry. Years of blood, sweat, and tears, okay not so much tears if he was trained by Danzo, but everything else, all of that was spent to give him his strength, and to have a considerable amount of it ripped away by the folly of a pair of old men. Jiraiya knew he would be in an uproar about it too if it were him. And he knew Naruto had all the reason to worry about it. He had just been attacked by two of the most infamous ninja actively listed in the bingo book and only sheer folly on their part and raw luck and hard-nosed skill from his got him out of it. His teammate had been injured in the fracas as well. Jiraiya looked at the boy who was practicing running through hand signs quickly, hey kid, don't worry about your teammate, 
he'll be fine. Naruto stopped working on his hand signs and looked at Jiraiya, oh, that. Matt, it'll be good for him. A little beating every once in a while builds character. Naruto shrugged when Jiraiya stared in shock at his nonchalant attitude, what? It's how I was trained. Getting your ass kicked makes you really want to avoid getting your ass kicked again so you do what you can to improve, it's good for him. Huh, well yeah that does make sense. Jiraiya nodded in agreement to Naruto's logic, alright then, let's go find Tsunade. Naruto almost stumbled, Tsunade. As in your old teammate, best damn medic ninja ever, gambles like shit, Tsunade. Jiraiya chuckled at his description of her, yeah that's the one kid. Though, I think you should refrain from using that last one in front of her unless you want to end up a smear on a wall. Jiraiya pulled out a picture of her and handed it to Naruto, where to find her and bring her back to the village. Naruto put the picture in one of his pockets and kept up with making hand signs that looked like a blur. Jiraiya saw him resume his task, hey kid, how about I give you that jutsu now? I guarantee you don't know it, and it could be useful to you. You can even train with it while walking like you are right now. Naruto thought for a moment, sure why not? It's not like I can go out of my way to handle any other kind of training while we're out here. Jiraiya grinned, good choice kid. I promise you won't regret it. We'll start when I can get the necessary supplies. XXX. Naruto and Jiraiya came upon a town where a festival was taking place. Jiraiya suggested he take this time to relax and they would pick up with the search soon while he would go and get some information on where she was. Naruto agreed and ditched Jiraiya before the latter could try and mooch off of his money. Naruto spent a few hours going through the town, cheating in air, partaking in some games and winning some prizes, getting a bite to eat. He had to admit, he may have lost a step or two in battle, but he was having more fun now than he would have been having in Nei if he was still one of them. That was one thing he had inherited from his old self and learned to love since he broke the seal, the value of a good time. He eventually got worried about the white-haired pervert he had been taking company with and set out to find him. It didn't take long for him to hear his rather distinctive laugh booming from a nearby tavern. Naruto entered to find Jiraiya with alcoholic beverage in hand and pleasurable company on both sides, one of which was hanging off of him, E.H. Hey Naruto! Come over here and take a load off. Naruto shrugged and walked over, sitting down to the woman on Jiraiya's left, a brunette with hair going down her back, so Jiraiya-sama, who's the little cutie here with you? Naruto raised his eyebrow, cutie. Yeah right, I can't get a girl in Konoha to even so much as look at me with anything less than a sneer when I speak to them. Naruto let out a bitter chuckle that was missed by everyone else. Jiraiya grinned, this is my student Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto say hello to Tokoko and Sukina. Naruto waved and let out a small hello. Tokoko, the girl he had been sitting next to that wasn't on Jiraiya, leaned on him, wrapping her arms around his neck. Naruto figured she must have been around five years older than him, he's so cute Jiraiya-sama. He heard the girl let out a gasp as she touched the scar on his face, how did you get something like this? You're so young. Naruto shrugged, life is hard, it's just a scar. It's nothing important, just a reminder to duck next time. He was a good sport about it as he let her trace the mark over his eye. Naruto and Jiraiya stayed and talked with the women until a few hours after nightfall. Naruto had refrained from drinking the entire time, letting Jiraiya get his fill for now, he knew the man would pay for it in the morning. Naruto waited until Jiraiya was blackout drunk, which took way longer than Naruto figured it should have been. What the hell was his alcohol to blood ratio? Kami. Bid goodbye to the women they were with and proceeded to haul Jiraiya out of the bar towards an inn for the night. As he got a certain distance down the road, Jiraiya seemingly got a second wind and rose from Naruto's shoulders, Wow, you are strong, Gaki. That was quite a ways to haul dead weight like me. Naruto looked up at Jiraiya, who had seemingly shrugged off the effects of an entire day's worth of binge drinking. You should be laying face up choking on puke right now. How in the hell are you even standing straight? Jiraiya smirked at the boy as he continued looking for a place to stay, I'm no lightweight kid. Naruto deadpanned a look at him saying that he didn't drink a lightweight's share, while Tsunade would have dropped hours ago, I'm just that good. I'm surprised you didn't drag me out or call me an old perv or something. Naruto sighed, 
I'm not adverse to enjoying myself, and those women were hot, besides, you said we were relaxing today, even a brainless ceiling asshole like you needs to rest, and that's obviously how you take the edge off so why should I have interrupted you? Jiraiya chuckled, you sure are different these days Gaki, I think Tokoko liked you, that damn scar is going to get you all sorts of pity sex when you get older. Naruto snorted, it's just because she doesn't know who I am. If we were in Konoha I'd have been shoved to the backburner there and you know it. Jiraiya Hamed in response, maybe you should get your head off of that pink haired girl then. There are plenty of other women that won't try to give you brain damage. He expected him to start ranting about how he'd never betray Sakura Chan, or how she was just complicated or something, what Naruto said made him almost fall in the street, huh, so true, well, you were the one who did it. Jiraiya looked over at the calm expression on his face, what? Naruto looked at him with a cocked brow, hiding his slight glare, the first thing I thought of her when I had time to think about my team again was what the hell was my other self smoking to think she was any good for me. My dumbass, childish self was the one that was attracted to her, therefore it's your fault. However I don't interact with any other girls, my age or otherwise, not before you sealed me and sure as hell not after, they all got used to the me that was terrible at everything. Naruto looked up at the moon, all the kunoichi my age all think I suck, or they can't stand me, all of the civilians fawn all over Uchiha Tem, or are too weak to be able to put up with my life and the ones that don't, all hate me anyway. I think Danzo might have been onto something when he told me to get rid of my emotions, because knowing you'll never get laid out of love kind of sucks Aero Senen. Naruto scratched his chin in thought. Jiraiya flinched as he noted how calmly he had just said that he would never find anyone to be with. No one should just accept that kind of thing as a fact of their life. Naruto left Jiraiya with one more thought for the night, that Tokiko girl was pretty cute though. XXX as they had woken up the next day and headed out on the road Jiraiya tossed Naruto a water balloon. Naruto looked up at him blankly, what the hell is this? It's not that hot arrow senin. You're a grown man. Jiraiya held out another in his own hand, the jutsu you're learning has three steps, the first one is to pop that balloon with just the rotation of your chakra. Naruto yawned, uh huh, well does this mystery jutsu have a name, or will I have the pleasure of doing that? Jiraiya held out his other hand as a rapidly spinning blue ball of chakra formed in it. Naruto noticed the speed and the size of the jutsu compared to the massive amount of chakra rolling inside of it. Jiraiya smirked as he saw Naruto's eyes affixed to the ball, it's called Rasengan. It was one of the Yandaimi Hokage's prized jutsu. Naruto nodded, whoa, Jiraiya let the jutsu fade, indeed, now let's. He was cut off as the sound of water splashing rang out. He turned to see Naruto shaking his hand and picking pieces of rubber off of it. Jiraiya held out his balloon, do that again. Naruto grabbed the balloon from his and popped it like clockwork. Jiraiya had to rub his eyes, what? How? Naruto shook more water off of his hands as he kept walking forward, I saw that the jutsu had chakra flowing in all directions, I just did that to the balloon and, pop. Jiraiya shook his head, a genin shouldn't have gotten something like that so quickly. A tick mark on Naruto's head appeared, yeah well I'm not supposed to be a genin either. I'm supposed to be a nei anbu, remember? Noticing a detail like that is amateur hour stuff. Naruto looked at him expectantly, what's the next step? Jiraiya dumbly held out a rubber ball, pop this with your chakra. It should be the most difficult step, it has to do with just power. Blam, Naruto's hand snapped to his ears as the rubber ball exploded in his hand. Damn it, why was that so loud? Jiraiya almost had a seizure out in the open road, how did you get it that time? Generating a consistent amount of power like that takes time. Naruto dug into his ear, and I have what sealed inside of me again. I've been dealing with powerful chakras since I was little, my own naturally got stronger. Danzo had me spamming high level jutsu all over the place by the time I was 8. Jiraiya opened his mouth but nothing came out. I'll show you the final step later. I need to find something new to start you on. What about your elemental affinity? Wind, and I have several jutsu for that element, I just need to relearn the big ones again. Naruto walked along with a bored expression on his face, where is Tsunade damn it? Did you find out anything in that town we were in? 
Jiraiya ceased his thoughts on Naruto's training and answered, I did actually. She was heading up towards the edge of the country, she'll probably wind up in Tanzakugai, so that's where we're going. Naruto grunted, tell me the third step so I'm not wasting time on the way. If I can't get my conditioning and then I'll have to work with this jutsu until we get somewhere where I can actually work on it. Jiraiya sighed and blew up a balloon, the next step is to mix the first two steps in this balloon. Naruto looked at the balloon in Jiraiya's hand, so what am I doing? Jiraiya lifted his other hand and formed a Rasengan for Naruto to see. Naruto opened his mouth, forming an O in recognition, so I'm doing that, just inside the balloon instead right? So I can get the spatial composition down. Jiraiya nodded, it took me two months just to get this far. It hasn't even been an hour yet for him. Kid what were you like before you were sealed? Thinking about something like that terrifies me. Naruto attempted Jiraiya's instructions. Jiraiya actually breathed a sigh of relief when Naruto's balloon popped. If the kid got Rasengan in one day then he would have had a fit. Naruto received the pack of balloons from Jiraiya and took out another to blow up. Well it looks like this will keep me busy for a while. XXX. What happened here? Jiraiya and Naruto looked at what used to be the famous castle of Tanzakugai. It was nothing but rubble at this point. Jiraiya and Naruto walked over to the scene and looked around. While Naruto kicked at the rubble under his feet Jiraiya noticed holes in the wall nearby, a sign of his wayward teammate. Jiraiya jerked Naruto by his arm to lead him away, come on kid, we're close, very close. After searching the town all day they stopped at a tavern for a little meal before retiring for the night. Jiraiya stopped as he walked inside, Tsunade. A blonde woman with a jewel-looking mark on her forehead looked up in shock, Jiraiya. What are you doing here? Jiraiya and Naruto walked over to her table where there was a black-haired woman holding a small pig, well we just stopped here for a bite to eat. Imagine meeting you here of all places. Naruto took a seat alongside Jiraiya and looked out at the two women, Tsunade, so this is the last of the Sanin. Looks like I've met the full set. Lucky me. Tsunade's eyes drifted over to him, so who's the Brad Jiraiya? Naruto's eye twitched, yep, lucky, lucky, lucky. Jiraiya looked at Naruto, who was wearing an unreadable expression, minus the twitching, this is Naruto Uzumaki, my new apprentice. Naruto's eyebrows shot up, apprentice. Since when? Jiraiya smirked at the boy, since you signed the toad contract before the invasion kid. Congratulations. Naruto grumbled and placed his face on his hands, great, the guy that locked away my strength and skill wants to make amends and teach me how to fight again. Jiraiya looked confused, kid don't you want me to do that? Naruto slammed his palms on the table, I'll tell you what I want. I want to go home so I can get my shit together and get strong again. I want to yell at you and beat you to a pulp. I want something or someone to cling to because I think I'm starting to lose it with all of the shit running through my mind. Naruto was standing now, but I can't have those things, not for a bunch of reasons. I can work on one of those things now though. Naruto pointed at Tsunade, you. We're going back to Konoha. Time to go home. Tsunade was stunned silent by the sheer fact that some kid just ordered her to do something of that magnitude, and he didn't even blink. Jiraiya palmed his forehead, Smooth kid, really subtle stuff there. Naruto glared at Jiraiya, you can shut up too. I'm still pissed at you damn it. Jiraiya groaned, when won't you be pissed at me? Naruto smirked, when I can do everything I used to be able to do and then some. Naruto looked back at Tsunade, so let's go. Come on. Tsunade flipped the table over angrily, who the hell do you think you were runt? Where do you think you can get off telling me to go back to that place? Naruto didn't bat an eye, I think I'm the unfortunate bastard tasked with dragging your sorry alcoholic ass home, and I don't fail missions. Naruto kicked his chair backwards, you can come with us, or I can beat your ass and drag you back myself. Tsunade pointed to the door and stomped outside. Naruto followed briskly, Jiraiya groaned as he stood to leave as well, come on Shizun. Someone needs to sweep that kid's remains off the street after Tsunade is done with him. XXX. Naruto stood across from Tsunade in the middle of the street. He looked around, you know this really isn't the place for something like this, unless you like paying for property damage. But don't you have enough debts? 
Shut up and get ready to face the music you brat. Tsunade lifted her index finger, one finger. That's all I need for a runt like you. Naruto smirked. I thought I was rusty after four years, well when was the last time she was even in a fight? Sometimes life cracks a window for you, well she just opened the goddamn front door for me. Jiraiya and Shizune walked out, Tsunade let it go, we can talk about this. Tsunade glared over at Jiraiya, shut up Jiraiya, he has this coming, brats like this need to know their place. Naruto glared over at Jiraiya also, yeah, shut up Aero Senen. Old ladies like this need to learn how to deal with their problems before they turn old and grey instead of just running away. Tsunade growled at Naruto, give me your best shot brat, you won't get another one. Naruto's eyes went cold as his face went blank, if I do this right, then one shot is all I'll really need. His eyes narrowed, you'd better hope I miss. A slight shiver went down Jiraiya's spine as he saw the look in Naruto's eyes, a Tsunade. You might want to use more than. Tsunade snapped at him again, I said shut up Jiraiya. Naruto kept his stone cold eyes leveled on her, looks like the crabby old lady needs an attitude adjustment, yelling at her old friends like that. Tsunade had enough of Naruto's mouth and charged at him. Naruto's body tensed as he counted the steps until she was in range, shouldn't Asanin be faster than this? I guess she really is rusty. Tsunade attempted a backhand swipe but Naruto swatted it away, leaving her guard wide open. Tsunade was shocked as Naruto moved far faster than she expected a kid his age to be able to, ending up with him sinking a fist into her ribs. Jiraiya had to let a small smile come on his face as he saw Shizune's jaw drop. Shizune's grip on the pet pig, Tun Tun almost squashed the poor thing as he saw a child get the first shot on Tsunade in a fight, Jiraiya-sama, how can that genin land a blow like that on Tsunade-sama? He hit first. Jiraiya shook his head, just because he's a genin doesn't mean he has to fight like a genin does it. Tsunade ran green blowing hands over her torso and glared at Naruto who had simply reset himself in his stance, so you can move with some quickness. You're still a brat, I still only need one finger. She won't even acknowledge when someone is a threat, this is going to work out better than the fight with Itachi. Naruto formed a cross seal and formed several cage bunshin, you got disoriented by just one of me, how are you going to handle eight? Scatter. Naruto's clones blurred around the street looking more like an angry hive of bees rather than a group of boys. Tsunade's eyes kept themselves on all possible threats. She ended up blocking a few preemptive strikes with just one finger, for her boast, and kept looking for a prime target to hit. The sounds of something swirling made Tsunade turn her head to see Naruto forming a blue ball that Tsunade could label from a mile away. Realizing just how damaging that move could be she chopped at the ground with her finger, disrupting his footing and forcing him to break the attack and fall down. Tsunade looked over at Jiraiya, Jiraiya, what were you thinking? Teaching a kid like this that kind of jutsu. Jiraiya wasn't even looking at her. He was looking in another direction with a grin on his face, hey Naruto. Don't embarrass her badly kid, she's supposed to be our next Hokage. Naruto strode out of the darkness of a nearby alley holding something in his hands. He had a dumbstruck look on his face, really. Her, are you sure? Because for all intents and purposes I just killed her. Tsunade watched as the Naruto in front of her burst into smoke and was about to ask what he meant. All of a sudden she felt a draft around her chest and looked down to see her grey kimono, blouse open and fluttering in the breeze. Shizune looked mortified at the sight of her master's busty glory out for all the world to see. She was thankful solely for the fact that the street was clear. Naruto smirked in a mean-spirited fashion as he slung her obi around like a rope, I think you're missing something there. His eyes widened as he actually got a decent look at her, whoa, good on you though. Bravo. Jiraiya ran up to Naruto and shook his hand with stars in his eyes, kid that was amazing. You're my hero. Jiraiya dropped to the ground and bowed down, I'm not worthy to train you kid. You should be training me. Tsunade's senses came back online as she proverbially saw Red and rushed over to Naruto, hitting him dead on and sending him flying into the front wall of a nearby building, utterly turning it to rubble. Jiraiya and Shizune ran over to where he had landed as Tsunade held her clothing shut with her hands. Amazingly they found him still conscious, but not in any condition to get back up. 
As Shizun started running a diagnostic jutsu on him he coughed up some blood, cough I win. Sunad stormed over and ripped her obi from his grasp, reapplying it, what do mean? Look at you brat, you're a mess. Naruto grinned, showing her bloody teeth in his smile, you still used more than one finger to beat me. You lose. Naruto shakily picked himself up off of the ground, shocking all who witnessed it, now play time is over. Time to go back to Konoha already. Tsunade sneered at him. Why would I? Why should I? I already said I'm not going. That place has taken too much from me. It isn't getting my life too. She turned to leave. Shizun. Come on. The brat is fine. We're leaving. Jiraiya stood in front of her path to leave. Tsunade. Like I said, the elders have chosen you as our next Hokage. Now that we've caught you we're not just going to let you vanish again. We'll stay on you until you decide to come along. Tsunade scoffed and turned away, looking out at the road. She saw the marking from the attempted Rasengan and looked back with a devious smirk. All right since you won't just leave how about we have a little wager. She walked over to the injured Naruto, that move you tried to use on me back there. You know it was once used by the Yandaimi Hokage. If you can master that move in one week then I'll give you the necklace I'm wearing and I'll return with you to Konoha. If you fail then you'll give me all of your money and give up the mission. Naruto looked at the necklace and back up at her, deal. One week, I'll learn how to perform the Rasengan in one week or we'll go home without you. Tsunade had a victorious look on her face and turned to leave, Shizun in tow. Naruto got Jiraiya to help him walk down the street as they went to get their own hotel room, are you going to be alright Gaki? Naruto's teeth were gritted as he tried his hardest to stay upright with Jiraiya's assistance, yeah. I just need to sleep it off for the time being, I'll be fine in the morning. I'm okay. Jiraiya rolled his eyes as they hobbled down the street, you know I kind of wasn't kidding back there kid. You're my hero today, that sight you gave me, absolutely glorious. I've wanted to see that again for over 15 years and I finally have. The best part, I didn't even get beaten up for it this time. Jiraiya finished with a lecherous grin on his face. Naruto sweat dropped, that's, great arrow senin. Glad I could help, I guess. XXX. The next day Naruto was awakened from his deep slumber by a knock at his door. Lumbering over to the door he opened it to find Shizun, Shizun-san. What is it? She came inside and looked him over, noting the fact that he was shirtless and had scars littering his body, are you sure you're okay from last night? Tsunade-sama has liquidated men using less force than she used on you. Naruto sat on his bed and stretched, I'm fine, I've had worse. So what do you need? I need to go train for this bed already. Shizun rubbed her arm awkwardly, that's what I want to talk to you about. I don't want you to think of Tsunade-sama as a bad person, she's just bitter. Naruto nodded, because her brother and lover were killed during wartime. I know. Shizun's eyes widened in shock, how do you know that? Naruto shrugged, the guy that trained me made me learn all kinds of stuff about Konoha's famous ninja. Shuzun looked at him strangely, the academy in Konoha sure goes over some classified things these days. Naruto chuckled darkly, no they don't. I didn't learn that in the academy. I learned things of that nature elsewhere. Shizun recovered admirably, well if you know that then you must know that that necklace is cursed. It will kill anyone who wears it other than Tsunade-sama. Naruto stood up and walked towards the door, well then I guess I'm next. Because I'm winning this little bet of ours, so tell her to get all of her affairs in order and get ready to go back to Konoha. I'll see you later Shizun-san. Naruto left Shizun sitting in the room as he left the hotel entirely. Naruto made his way to the outskirts of the town where he found Jiraiya sitting against a tree waiting for him. He had a smirk on his face, kid you must have the biggest set on you. You made a bet like that with Tsunade. Naruto smirked at him, well I have a week to train my body back up to normal. It won't be even a drop in the bucket to what I need, but free time is free time. Jiraiya looked at him strangely, kid you need to work on the Rasengan and win this bet. You can wait to do everything else right now, finish the jutsu and then do everything else. Naruto looked at him mischievously, oh you mean this Rasengan. Naruto formed the perfect blue ball in his hand and pushed it against the tree Jiraiya was sitting against, forcing it to explode in a shower of bark and wood chips. 
Jiraiya looked at him stunned. You finished it. Naruto grinned widely. Deception is just another tool of the game. When I fought her last night I used it as a distraction. I just needed to get her attention so my clone didn't really focus on the attack. I can do the Rasengan, but showing her that I could last night would have done no good. She would have just made another, impossible, bet that I would have had to actually work at. Jiraiya was still confused, well why didn't you just show her last night? Naruto gave him a dry look, Ero Senen I was seeing Sextuple last night. She gave me a concussion, I still feel my head pounding even today. There was no way I could focus to show her the finished product last night after the bet was made. Naruto stretched out as he prepared to work, I'll just milk this for the week of training I can get in and show her on the last day. I don't have to tell you to watch her, you know she's a flight risk. Jiraiya looked at Naruto seriously, yeah, there's a good chance Orochimaru is here as well. Naruto stopped stretching to look up at Jiraiya, really? Well then that's all the more reason for me to get to work now isn't it? Jiraiya turned to head back to town with a grin on his face, damn brat is going to be stronger than all of us one of these days. XXX. Over the course of the next week Naruto threw himself into training as hard as he could. Regaining intense control of his chakra was his primary concern, he trained in this facet by way of mass kanai balancing. He attempted to reacquaint himself with the movements of swordplay once more, but until he could get in some decent sparring there was only so much he could remember. He still needed weights to get his speed up, and he figured his strength was alright for now. Not being able to activate his true levels for years did a number on his muscles. Contrary to popular belief, gravity seals aren't really a form of training. The seal weighs you down by connecting to your chakra and manipulating how much you would be able to pump to your muscles, decreasing the greatest amounts that you attempt to generate. Depending on the nature of the seal it could seal away any percentage of your maximum. The difficulty and obscurity of the seal gave rise to the rumors of it being used as a training method. Jiraiya had been using the seal in combat for decades since he had discovered its uses. When Jiraiya came across a powerful or dangerous ninja that he didn't necessarily want to kill he would sometimes place the seal on them to make sure they couldn't challenge him again. Most of them however never realized this and went the rest of their careers lagging in their physical skills unknowingly until they were later killed in battle. Naruto had to sigh in relief when he realized that Jiraiya had placed something like that on him, who knows what may have happened if he had kept it on. With dangerous ninja after me and me lacking the ability to get faster or stronger I would have been a dead man. At least he still had enough speed to deem manageable against most opponents for now anyway. He found that he was as fast as Rock Lee with his ways off. Naruto chuckled when he though of the boy, now that would be a hell of a spar. He then realized that Lee had been crippled by Gar during the exams, and that stoked his resolve further that Tsunade wasn't going to get out of this bet with him, if anyone can help Lee get better it's her. Just another reason to drag her back, kicking and screaming if I have to. Naruto rubbed his hands together as he felt a familiar presence at the edge of the woods, okay, kill two birds with one stone. Train this jutsu of mine and rattle her with my training. Serves her right for trying to spy. Naruto made a mass of hand signs and drew his hands apart as wind whipped around them. He turned to a boulder and thrust it out his fists pushed together at the thumb and index finger, Fudan, Fujin Saiken, wind release, divine fist of the wind god. A fierce wind pushed from his fists and impacted hard against the boulder, leaving the imprint of his two fists the size of his entire body. Naruto smirked as he felt Tsunade leave the area of her hiding, all right. Finally, one down, eight more to go. I'm getting all of my jutsu back. Just wait till I bust out the big ones. Chapter 4. Reality Check. Naruto awoke with a groan. Ugh, okay, I guess I still can't use all of my jutsu yet. The previous night Naruto had exhausted himself trying one of his more upper tier ninjutsu. Waking up in his own bed he realized that Tsunade must have been spying on him again. Naruto chuckled. Heh <laughs> heh, I wonder if she saw that one. Naruto jumped out of bed and tripped over a black bundle at the foot of his bed. As it groaned he realized who it was, Shizun San. What are you doing here? Shizun's hazy eyes opened and widened as she jumped up, surprising the blonde, Tsunade Sama. Where is she? Naruto grabbed Shizun to calm her down, hold on a second, just wait. 
You're saying she did this to you? Shizun stopped stirring and rested in his arms, though he felt her breathing was still frantic. Naruto sighed and let her go. Shizun immediately made for the window, we have to find Tsunade-sama. It might be too late to stop her. As Shizun left through the window a kunai buried itself to the right of her head into a wall. They both turned to see Jiraiya standing on the ledge uneasily, where's Tsunade? His voice held a threatening tone as he slinked along the wall up to Naruto and Shizun. Naruto took note of Jiraiya's condition, Jiz Aero Senen what the hell happened to you? Jiraiya sat on the ledge and experimentally flexed his arms, Tsunade drugged me last night. I should have known better, she wasn't as pissy as she usually was when she drank with me. Naruto's attention was drawn up at an adjacent rooftop, but when he peered up he saw nothing. Shizun had gone to fetch Jiraiya an antidote to whatever Jiraiya had ailing him. She ran back and handed Jiraiya a glass of water and some crushed up pills, sorry Jiraiya-sama there isn't an antidote to the poison, this should even you out though. Jiraiya took the pills and swallowed them with the water, thank you Shizun. When Naruto's attention returned to the roof he could no longer sense anyone's presence. Naruto looked at Shizun, it's Orochimaru isn't it? Shizun looked surprised, Naruto looked over to Jiraiya, how you feeling Aero Senen? Jiraiya crushed the glass in his hands, it's not much. My chakra is still fluctuating, but it'll have to do. Shizun looked down sadly, Orochimaru came to us last week with an offer, restore his arms and he'll return Tsunade-sama's most precious people to her from the dead. She looked at Jiraiya hopefully, today is the day they meet, we might still be able to keep her from doing it. Jiraiya stood, so how are we going to find her? Shizun grabbed Tun Tun and jumped to the ground before placing the small pig onto the ground, we need your help Tun Tun. Can you find Tsunade-sama for us? The pig oinked as it sniffed at the ground. Jiraiya and Naruto dropped down around them just as Tun Tun began oinking wildly at Shizun. Shizun turned to the other two with her, Tun Tun has her scent. Come on, it's this way. XXX. They returned to the area of the ruined castle and found even more signs of destruction, though they were newer. Naruto smiled at the sight of the pulverized wall, it looks like the old bat turned him down. Jiraiya nodded. Yeah, that might not be so good for her though. Come on, we still have to find her. As they ran into a field they found Tsunade being beaten by Kabuto. Shizun shouted for her mistress as she ran over to her side, Tsunade-sama. Naruto and Jiraiya waited close by as Shizun took out a handkerchief and wiped blood from Tsunade's face. Naruto looked at the scene in confusion, Aero Senen, what's going on here? Is it a genjutsu or something? Jiraiya shook his head in the negative, Tsunade has hemophobia. She's afraid of blood kid, even the sight of it messes her up and makes her like that. Right now she's utterly useless. Naruto looked out at Orochimaru, whose arms were wrapped up, but Naruto could see faint traces of blood coming through. Next to him was Kabuto who was wearing a headband with a musical note on it. Naruto's eyes narrowed at the sight, Kabuto Yukushi, I can't say it's good to see you again. At least I know my information was right, I just wish I could have gotten your ass before the invasion, damn seal. Jiraiya looked down at the now fuming blonde, Kami kid I said I was sorry. Hindsight is 20 to 20 they always say. Orochimaru chuckled as he saw the arrival of his third teammate, Jiraiya, and Naruto-kun too. What a warm reunion this is. Though I do no wonder what you are doing here. Jiraiya held his arm out in front of Naruto keeping him from beginning to engage the enemy, protect Tsunade Gaki. Orochimaru is too much for you, and that Kabuto kid is out of your league also, it would take an Anbu. Jiraiya trailed off as he looked down at Naruto who was giving him a deadpan look, trying to be funny old man. Jiraiya sighed and waved, fine, Shizun can watch over Tsunade I guess. Go ahead and fight Specs over there, I'll handle Orochimaru. Orochimaru heard this and chuckled, you'll handle me Jiraiya, you were always the weakest of the Sanin, even handicapped you can't beat me. And sending your little blonde against Kabuto here, you must not like him too much. Jiraiya looked back at Shizun, can you keep an eye on Tsunade? Me and the Gaki will handle the snake and his flunky. Shizun nodded and returned to trying to calm Tsunade down. You ready brat? Jiraiya looked over at Naruto who smiled up at him angrily, this one's for Sarutobi-sensei. Naruto snorted, 
You can make it for the old man if you want. This one's for the hubby douche sicking those five souped up cursed seal assholes on me when he chased me out of Odo. That son of a bitch with the bones wasn't a joke, I've still got a gripe with him. Kabuto now. Kabuto pulled the bandages off a of one of Orochimaru's arms and ran his own blood down the summoning tattoo on it, Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning jutsu. Kabuto and Orochimaru then stood atop three rampaging snakes, heading towards Naruto and Jiraiya. Jiraiya went to summon himself, and in a small puff of smoke Gamakichi was revealed, oh, hey. Good to see you again. Naruto sweat dropped, seriously. I could do better than that. Come on this is serious. Gaki. Room. Naruto moved back as Jiraiya made a set of hand signs and slammed his hands on the ground. Doden. Yomi Numa, Earth Release. Swamp of the Underworld. The ground in front of him turned into a dark murky substance, trapping the snakes within, disabling their movement. Jiraiya audibly cursed, damn it. It isn't very deep at all. I must still be under the effects of Tsunade's drug. Naruto shook his head, man arrow senin, you sure do suck today. Come on, we don't need any help right now anyway. Naruto turned to Gamakichi, go over to the lady in black and the blonde woman and stay put. This won't be a nice battle. Gamakichi hopped off as the battle stalemated. Jiraiya and Naruto both launched out at their chosen opponents, who broke off to confront them separately. Jiraiya began assaulting Orochimaru who was noticeably unable to attack using his arms, instead lashing out with kicks and slipping away from Jiraiya's assault. Jiraiya decided to tease his former teammate, man it must be hard to use jutsu with no arms eh. That must suck for a guy like you Haorikmaru. Orochimaru gave a superior smirk, I don't even need my arms to destroy you Jiraiya. I saw your weak jutsu, you're just as bad as me. Jiraiya barked out a laugh, I guess that's true as well. I guess we're just going to have to wait for our retainers to finish off their little speck of business before we can really get to the main event. Orochimaru laughed slowly, the Kyubi child Jiraiya. I've seen what he can do. Against Kabuto he has no chance, the boy has absolutely no skill as a shinobi. Jiraiya gave a big grin, and that would be my fault. But don't worry, Rochi, I fixed him up before we even got to this town. I'm letting him fight Kabuto down there because I know he'll win. Consider this his coming out party so to speak. Orochimaru looked befuddled, I fought him Jiraiya. Even going as hard as he could, Kayubi's chakra and all, he didn't come close to impressing me. Now the Uchiha, what strength. A true genius. Jiraiya broke down in laughter, I guess the standards for a genius are seriously declining these days. If just being a genin at the regular age makes you a genius then I don't know what the hell to call Naruto. Orochimaru gave a cruel grin, how about failure? Loser. Cannon fodder. Frontline trash. Take your pick or make a few more of your own. Jiraiya had a placid smile on his face as he just stared at Orochimaru. Ah, that's a good one. Orochimaru contorted his face in confusion. What is? What are you talking about? Jiraiya gave him a hard look. That face of yours just now. I want to remember it for later. Just so I can compare it to the look on your face after you see what the Gaki can really do. XXX. Naruto faced off with Kabuto a distance away from where Orochimaru and Jiraiya were currently in conflict. Kabuto crossed his arms, a decided superior smirk on his face, you might want to leave this place before things get messy, you're a little out of your element here. Orochimaru sama, myself, Jiraiya, Tsunade, even the woman with Tsunade. All of us are high level shinobi, I myself am on par with Kakashi Hitaki. And you, you're just a cute little genin that's out of his place. Naruto started chuckling, but then chuckling gave way to full blown laughter, haha, man I'm glad I didn't end up broken like everybody else in Nay, because hearing that little, threatening, rundown was too much. You, comparable to Kakashi Hitaki. I'll believe it when I feel it. Naruto pointed back in Tsunade's general direction, I already beat Tsunade the other day. I could have killed her if I wanted to, knowing she's got hemophobia would have easier than it was. He pointed in the direction of the trapped snakes, Orochimaru is crippled. It wouldn't be too much of a stretch for me to beat him too, especially if he's underestimating me like you. Kabuto laughed loudly, to be naive Genin, believing that you can fight and defeat anyone. 
Naruto scratched his head, how to get you to understand? Okay, you obviously remember four years ago when one of Odogaku's bases got sacked and Orochimaru sent out his elite bodyguards to handle the intrusion. Kabuto nodded, those fools were punished for allowing the intruder to escape. A spy like that could have been detrimental to our efforts. They haven't failed since. Kabuto's eyes snapped open wide, wait, are you really saying, there's no way, you would have had to have been eight years old. Naruto grinned widely, ding 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 ding. Got it in one Kabu Tem. It was me, I'd have gotten away clean too if it wasn't for Aero Senen's love for dramatic bullshit. Who blows up the information depot during a reconnaissance mission? Honestly, how is that stealth? Kabuto pointed at him accusingly, no way. From what I've seen and from the information on you you're nothing. A low-level genin. Naruto chuckled, well that's what the Konoha records had on one Kabuto Yukushi also if you'll recall. We all know how that turned out right Mr. Spy. If you were capable of it then why wouldn't I be? I didn't even have to join any ranks and keep suspicion off like you did, all I had to do was not get caught. Naruto tapped his finger on his head, I had the plans for your invasion all up here way back then. Every move you had planned out over the long term was all up here. All of your bases, the info that was listed on your cursed seal, the true nature of Orochimaru's immortality jutsu, it's all here. The only reason your invasion had even half of a chance of even getting off of the ground was because of some unfortunate business that ended with me getting my memory and abilities sealed off before I could tell the necessary people. Kabuto tilted his glasses and scoffed, well then Naruto-kun, please show me these skills of yours that allowed you to breach our defenses i'm in need of a new form of entertainment after all naruto nodded sagely ah i see i guess it would get boring being orochimaru's ass muppet after a while playing hide the trouser snake would get dull even for a flaming fruit like you i assume kabuto gritted his teeth in anger do not slander orochimaru sama like that what could you possibly know about his power naruto grinned hey being a pedophilic creep doesn't mean he's weak, and from the way you're defending him it sounds like a fucking lie to me boy. And don't think I didn't notice how you refrained from defending yourself either. Kabuto rushed in at Naruto who set himself in a defensive stance. Kabuto's hands glowed blue as he neared closer. Naruto dodged his first attacks and kicked him back to get some distance between them, chakra scalpels I see. Your medic ninja, letting you in close wouldn't be too favorable as long as you're using that. Kabuto chuckled, try to keep me away then Naruto-kun. Kabuto rushed back in an engaged Naruto close-up once more. Naruto ducked out of the way of Kabuto's attack, choosing to slip under and around his punches rather than block, lest his muscle tendons and other internal things in his arms be cut. He also had to watch it when he threw a punch or kick of his own to make sure that Kabuto didn't cut anything by simply blocking or parrying his moves. Naruto dodged even more of Kabuto's potentially fatal strikes, grunting in effort, you're really annoying to fight. You're really fast, even for a medic nin. Kabuto's confident smirk returned, like I said Naruto-kun, you're all talk. You're not on my level. Kabuto overextended on one of his attacks and allowed Naruto to spring out of close range. Naruto immediately began tossing out kunai at Kabuto who dodged deftly and chuckled, simple kunai Naruto-kun. That honestly can't be your best. Naruto rolled his eyes, there you go again, with that superiority thing of yours, why are bad guys such douchebags? Naruto rolled through a series of hand signs, Raiden, Denkai, Lightning Release, Electric Field. Kabuto sat in place as he felt and saw nothing. Naruto simply stood in place, staring at Kabuto with cold blue eyes that seemed to analyze his every movement. Kabuto simply strolled forward, you must not have that jutsu down quite yet Naruto-kun. Don't worry. I mean you are still just a genin after all. Naruto's eyes showed no indication that he had even acknowledged Kabuto's words. Kabuto shrugged and strolled forward, reactivating his chakra scalpels once more, until a sharp jolt of electricity thrusted him backwards, what is this? Didn't you hear me call out the jutsu? Naruto kept his gaze on Kabuto only this time he had a smirk on his face, you didn't really think that I was that bad at using kunai did you? Kabuto turned to see a small spark of electricity coming from one of the kunai. He then noticed that the weapons Naruto had thrown were strewn about in a rough circle around him, a barrier jutsu. 
I really have been underestimating you. Naruto made more hand signs, I'm not done yet. From here I can branch off into tons of stuff, just watch. Raiden. Denki Mehimu, lightning release, electric mayhem. Kabuto heard multiple snaps of electricity going off around him before a burning jolt hit his body. As he caught his breath from the sudden zap he could actually see random pulses of lightning rushing from Kanai to Kanai. Another shot hit him and dropped him to the ground while he was analyzing the jutsu. Kabuto was breathing raggedly as he turned his head towards Naruto whose hands were held out at the field surrounding Kabuto. Do you like it? This jutsu lets me just trap and torment you in there until you black out or just die. The more chakra I pump into it the more frequent the bursts of electricity will come. The only thing is that I can't control the lightning coursing through the field, but it still has a great chance of hitting you as you felt. Naruto channeled more chakra into his attack, forcing the snapping sounds of electricity to sound off more frequently. Kabuto shakily rose to his feet once more but was quickly struck back down. Before he could even try to rise again he was hit one more time. Kabuto growled to himself and sunk into the ground before another bolt could hit him. Naruto simply stood in a position to move quickly and jumped aside as Kabuto's hands emerged from the ground to grab at his legs. Naruto landed and formed three cage bunshin who swarmed around Kabuto, launching attacks up close. Kabuto had somehow recovered enough from being electrocuted to fend off and dispel the bunshin without too much trouble. Kabuto looked at Naruto who was once more giving him a cold stare, that was a pretty effective jutsu Naruto-kun. If I couldn't dig my way out I don't know how I would have escaped it. Kabuto's hands glowed green as he ran them over his torso to heal himself, you're quite a troublesome opponent. Naruto tapped his foot impatiently while Kabuto healed, well while you're doing that, Naruto made more hand signs and thrusted his fists out at Kabuto, Fudin, Fujin Saiken, Wind Release, Divine Fist of the Wind God. A visible ripple of air flew at Kabuto and hit him like a high-speed cart, sending him flying back, rolling head over heels bonelessly until he came to a stop. Naruto smirked as he saw Kabuto cease his backwards movement, you still alive over there. Kabuto stood up once more with blood trailing down his chin, that was a solid hit there Naruto-kun. I was right, you are a troublesome opponent. Naruto scoffed at Kabuto's pseudo praise, oh really? I thought I was just a genin that was out of his element. If all it took to get your praise was an ass kicking then when I go back to Konoha I guess I'll have to start dealing them out en masse. XXX. Shizune had cleaned the blood from Tsunade's face quickly but found that she was still lacking response. She had taken to watching Naruto fight Kabuto seeing as how Jiraiya and Orochimaru were too far away to find and that she didn't know whether or not Naruto would require her backup. Much to her surprise and delight however, Naruto was capable of handling Kabuto handily. Were it not for the fact that Kabuto was a medic ninja she was sure that the accumulated damage of Naruto's attacks would have beaten him. Tsunade's eyes had been affixed straight ahead ever since Kabuto had splattered her with blood, so she actually had been watching Naruto fight Kabuto the entire time. Watching him fight off the silver-haired medic she realized that she had been extremely wrong in her first impressions of him. He shot his mouth off when they first met not because he was too confident in his own abilities, but because he found her pathetic, he truly did. Someone with such a famous name, such a famous lineage, and such talent and legend known around the elemental nations was so bitter and disenfranchised. So much so that she let her skills fade enough for someone like himself to get the better of her, that shouldn't have happened, no matter how dangerous he was. When she had seen him train for the entire week she had been amazed. His attempt to use a range of high-level techniques was something she had never seen from a boy so young. After he was done with one he would move right on to the next one. If he couldn't get one to work he would attempt it until he could force it or until he dropped out of exhaustion. The spark she could see in his blue eyes while he trained was the antithesis of what could be found in them in battle. In training he would laugh, chuckle, crack jokes at himself and show his spirit and emotion. In battle he kept things bottled only choosing to take snide verbal shots at his opponents to get the upper hand. She had to rub her eyes a few times as she watched him train, because his actions in training reminded her so much of her deceased younger brother Nawaki. Gamakichi hopped on her shoulder and looked out at the fight excitedly, man my bro is kicking ass out there. She unconsciously clenched her fist around her necklace as the battle carried on. Maybe, 
Just one more time, she could believe in someone. XXX. Kabuto pulled out a hooked kanai, as enlightening as our little skirmish has been Naruto-kun, it's time I put an end to this. Orochimaru-sama is a busy man, we all have work to do. Naruto nodded and pointed back at Tsunade, yep I agree. Right now I have to go drag Ba-chan back to Konoha. But I also have a bet to win, luckily for me you're going to help me with that. Naruto snapped his fingers as two pairs of arms shot up from the ground and grabbed Kabuto's legs and arms, holding him in place. Kabuto tried to shake them off, but the grip was iron, what? What is this? A familiar voice sounded off from behind where he was grabbed. He turned slightly to face the cold eyes of the boy that was also facing off against him across the field, you didn't think you were the only one who could use Doden. Mogaragakur no Jutsu Earth Release, Hidden Mole Jutsu did you? Kabuto looked ahead of him to see Naruto smirking, now I've got this new jutsu I was taught, but I never got to use it on any real people before. I think you'll make the perfect guinea pig for me don't you think? With your healing abilities you should be fine, maybe. Meh it's not like I really care anyway. Naruto charged up chakra into his hand. Kabuto's eyes widened and his struggling increased as he realized just what it was as a blue spinning orb took shape in Naruto's grasp. Naruto strode towards him slowly, the stride turned into a jog and the jog into a sprint as he rushed at Kabuto. He thrusted the attack out and into the exposed body of Kabuto, Rasengan. Naruto ignored the blood flying as the attack tore into Kabuto's body and sent him flying off into a nearby boulder. Naruto turned towards Tsunade and walked with a purpose over to her and Shizune. When he got close a goofy grin appeared on his face, I do believe you owe me that necklace of yours Ba-chan. XXX. Orochimaru's jaw dropped low as he had just seen Naruto handily dispatch his right hand man. A clicking sound brought him back into awareness as he saw Jiraiya holding a camera, ah that's a good one. Orochimaru gritted his teeth, such power. He's too dangerous to leave alive, I have to kill him here before he gets too strong. Orochimaru flew off of the snakes at Naruto. Jiraiya tried stopping him but was tossed aside. Tsunade's drug had yet to wear off. As he launched himself at Naruto his sword, Kusanagi, emerged from his mouth. Naruto's back was turned to the murderous Sanin as he closed in, sword out and about. As he was talking to Tsunade his senses went off and he drew his sword, turning around in the nick of time just to block Orochimaru's strike. Naruto's eyes widened as he realized just who he was crossing blades with, Orochimaru Tem, nice to see you again. He noticed the arms of Orochimaru, the old man really did a number on you back in Konoha didn't he? Orochimaru hissed at the boy as he pushed against him, just die boy. You'll ruin my plans for the future. He pulled back and began slashing at Naruto who held up his defenses, slowly backing up due to his surprising strength. Naruto tried to strike back but Orochimaru showed traits reminiscent of his summons as he dodged Naruto's attacks. Naruto had to take great care as he slipped around Orochimaru's strikes, even a scratch from the legendary weapon could poison him, a tactic that Naruto had to somewhat respect, a good way to ensure victory for sure. And Orochimaru knew how to use it, even from his mouth. As the clang of steel on steel went on Orochimaru landed a kick to his body, sending him flying back next to Tsunade. Naruto gave her a reassuring grin, don't worry Ba-chan. I'll get rid of this guy and then I'll be dragging you back to Konoha, just sit tight. Tsunade gasped at the sight of the blonde's grinning face, he looks just like Nawaki. She took notice of Orochimaru hovering over him, Orochimaru thrusted downwards with his sword, Naruto barely blocked the point of the sword with the flat of his own. Naruto struggled against Orochimaru as the murderous intent in Orochimaru's eyes blazed. Suddenly a fist was implanted into Orochimaru's face sending him flying a few feet back. Naruto blinked as he was pulled to his feet by the woman who was just on the ground watching him, uh, Ba-chan. Tsunade was staring out intently at Orochimaru, are you okay brat? Naruto nodded dumbly, yeah Ba-chan, I'm just fine. She smirked at him in response, good, because I owe you a serious beatdown for all of this, Ba-chan, crap you're spouting. Realization then covered her face, oh yeah. She took off her necklace and placed it on Naruto, you win kid. You've beaten me fair and square and I'm an honest woman. Orochimaru stood up and cracked his jaw back into place as he glared out at Tsunade, 
Tsunade, what do you think you're doing? Why would you put your life at risk just to assist a brat like that? Tsunade cracked her knuckles, I would risk my life because I am Tsunade Senju, granddaughter of the Shodai Hokage, grandniece of the Nadaim Hokage, and as of today I am the Godaim Hokage of Kanahagakur no Sato. Naruto and Shizune appeared at her side, you tell him Ba-chan. Now let's kick his ass and go home already. Orochimaru-sama, Kabuto landed by his side and drew more blood down Orochimaru's summon tattoo to call upon another summon. Naruto blanched as he saw Kabuto still moving, what? I ripped him apart, he should be dead. Naruto. Naruto rushed off to Jiraiya's side to summon for him, bring out Gamabunta. Naruto nodded and summoned for him and Jiraiya. Tsunade followed suit and summoned her own boss creature. As three massive puffs of smoke went up across the landscape the smoke cleared to reveal a massive snake, slug, and toad, all looking at one another. Gamabunta let out a puff of smoke from his pipe, well if it isn't Manda and Katsuyu. How long's it been since I've seen you two? Jiraiya looked down from where he and Naruto were standing on his head, Bunta, we need your help for this one. So are you in? Gamabunta let out another puff from his pipe, sure, why not? I guess now I can finally get that snakeskin wallet I've been wanting. Naruto smirked, what would a giant toad want with a snakeskin wallet anyway? Naruto looked over at Kabuto standing on Manda next to Orochimaru, I swear that Rasengan should have killed him. I hit him dead on, I splattered his innards all over my face and everything. Jiraiya looked at Naruto momentarily. If he's anything like his master then he's a bastard to kill. Don't worry kid, we're settling up right now. Tsunade looked out at Orochimaru from atop Katsuyu, this is it Orochimaru. After this there will be one less Sanin in the world. Orochimaru simply chuckled while Manda hissed under him, Orochimaru. What do you think you're doing summoning me out here? Kabuto tried to calm the massive snake down, Manda we just. Silence well. I won't bother speaking to a flunky like you. Manda turned angry eyes to the top of his head, when this is over I'll be expecting over 100 sacrifices. Orochimaru smirked, of course. Nothing less for you Manda. Kabuto let out a breath he didn't know he was holding, thank goodness. If Manda knew Orochimaru-sama couldn't use jutsu he might just eat us. Jiraiya patted Naruto on the head, alright kid, it's deadly serious now. Stay out of things unless I say otherwise. Even if you think you see an opening it's probably a feint. Naruto snorted and slapped Jiraiya's hand from his head, I'm aware of the level of this fight arrow senin. And I'm also not stupid enough to fall for any half-assed feints. As far as I'm concerned I'm your trump card if anything. Jiraiya looked at Naruto in a confused manner, how so gaki? Naruto smirked, think about it. Orochimaru can't use his arms to use jutsu, Kabuto and Shizune don't really have any long-range jutsu, you and I are the only ones that can fire stuff from a distance, and I can make an ungodly amount of cage bunshin, making tons of cannon fodder potential attackers. I'm your ace in the hole here. Jiraiya chuckled, well I guess that's one thing about you that didn't change, you always want to be in the fight. Naruto scratched his head, yeah, I guess it's in my blood or something. Jiraiya patted Gamabunta on the head, let's go Bunta. Gamabunta drew his tonto and rushed at Manda who slithered away rapidly, surprising Naruto, damn. That big ass snake is ridiculously fast. Manda moved to Gamabunta's blind spot and attempted to bite down on him, poisonous fangs glistening in the sunlight. Gamabunta jumped aside in time to dodge the strike and hopped away. Katsuyu moved in and launched acid from her mouth at Manda. Once again showing deceptive speed Manda slipped away and rushed Gamabunta. The boss toad lifted his sword to block Manda's bite, but with a swing of his tail he knocked the sword out of Gamabunta's webbed hands. Katsuyu launched more acid out at Manda, but he dodged before it could hit. Manda rushed over to Katsuyu and began constricting her. Tsunade noticed her boss summon in dire straits, Katsuyu, separate. The massive slug did as commanded and broke off into tons of smaller forms disorienting Manda who had been wrapped around her at the time. Jiraiya and Gamabunta decided to take advantage of the momentary advantage given to them. Gamabunta jumped back to gain some space while Jiraiya on his head went through hand signs, Gamabunta. Give me some oil. Gamabunta spat out a glob of oil as Jiraiya held his fingers to his mouth to make a fireball, Kaden, 
Gamayu Endon Fire Release Toad Oil Flame Bullet The massive fire stream that followed engulfed Manda, seemingly melting his figure, however it revealed to simply be a snakeskin. Manda then burst from the ground behind Gamabunta. Naruto who had been sitting back the entire time saw this and whipped through hand signs, Fudan, Fujin Saiken, Wind Release, Divine Fist of the Wind God. Naruto shot out a double-fisted punch at Manda who recoiled with the markings of fists on his face. Manda hissed as he coiled himself up, the stinging marks still evident, little fucking brat. Jiraiya grinned at the shot Naruto had taken at the powerful summon until he blinked, wait. Where's Tsunade? Right on cue Tsunade flew at Manda, holding Gamabunta's tonto and slammed the blade through his mouth, pinning him to the ground. Naruto's eyes widened at the feet of strength, Aero Senen, remind me to never pull the crap that I tried when I first met Bachan ever again. Jiraiya patted his head, well first of all, calling her Bachan is just asking for it. Naruto scoffed, that's pushing it. If I won't stop calling you Aero Senen then how can she stop me from calling her Bachan? Super strength beatdown be damned. Tsunade ran up Manda's body and began pummeling Orochimaru while Kabuto's attention was held by Shizune. Naruto's sweat dropped at the sight of the snake Sanin taking such a beating, why you think we should jump in or something? Jiraiya had his telescope out with a stupid grin on his face, nah. Tsunade's got it kid. Naruto's eye twitched as the fight persisted, no I mean for Orochimaru. His facial structure has to be liquidated by now, Kami, let it be known that the guy can take one hell of a punch if nothing else, he can't even get up a guard to block, that sucks. Tsunade sent him flying with one last massive shot. Kabuto rushed to his side and picked him up. Orochimaru glared out at Tsunade, damn you Tsunade, my plans have failed for now. Do not think this is over, there is still another way to heal my arms, and the next time, I'll kill you both. With that being said he and Kabuto sunk into the earth to make their escape. Naruto, Jiraiya, and Shizune appeared next to her as all of the summons had long since dispersed. Jiraiya slapped Naruto on the shoulder, good job brat. A high level fight like this is over and you aren't an ugly red smudge on the landscape. Naruto sighed and rolled his shoulder, no respect, I don't get no respect at all. Shizune smiled and kissed him on the cheek, I respect you Naruto-kun. Naruto chuckled in disbelief and shook his head with a slight smile on his face, and that somehow made this day of bullshit somewhat worth it. Thank you Shizune-chan. Tsunade smirked as she walked over to Naruto, well then brat. You won the bet, got the necklace, and now we're going back to Konoha. What are we going to do now? Naruto stood still in thought for a moment before turning on his heel and heading back to town. He waved over his shoulder as he walked away. We just got through fighting Orochimaru and I've been training non-stop for about a week. I'm going to go sleep like the dead, you guys can go do whatever the hell you want. The amassed adults had a chuckle as they heard Naruto grumbling about Kabuto's blood being all in his clothes. Tsunade shook her head at his retreating figure, he's going to be a fine man one day. And perhaps a fine Hokage too. Jiraiya put a hand on her shoulder, you don't know the half of it. A lecherous grin came upon his face, now that that's all done, a woman like you can't be seen in clothes with blood all over them, that's a travesty, it should be a dress or nothing. Luckily for you I happen to have no dress back in my room. Naruto could only shake his head as the sounds of a solid, thwack, followed by Jiraiya flying overhead towards town rang out. Chapter 5. Wrath of the Maelstrom. The walk back to Konoha had been entirely uneventful, entirely, and this is what terrified Jiraiya more than anything else. Naruto had said no more than five sentences to him over the course of the trip home. And whenever he did it was simply business. He spoke to Tsunade and Shizune on a regular basis, he had gotten along quite well with Tsunade's dark-haired attendant, go figure. But whenever Jiraiya would try to jump into the conversations Naruto would either end them, or simply box him out. Apparently he had been telling the truth and no just shooting the shit when they started. He would be professional because they were on a mission, and now that it was all but over, Jiraiya was starting to see just how Naruto was feeling about him. Upon their arrival in Konoha they all headed up to the Hokage Tower to get Tsunade introduced and situated, grilling by the Sandame's old advisors included. 
Konohamaru didn't really take kindly to someone replacing his grandfather's position so he holed himself up inside the office, barring entry with traps and blocking the door. Somehow he ended up keeping people out all day long. Upon being informed by Konohamaru's friends, Udon and Moegi, Naruto just walked up, Sparta kicked the heavy oaken door off of the hinges, sending all of the stuff behind it flying, walked through the office using the door to block all of Konohamaru's traps, and dragged the kid out by his collar. He chose to do this himself because he knew Tsunade would have done roughly the same thing if she really wanted to get into the office, and she might not have been so nice about it. Naruto took Konohamaru to the top of the Hokage Tower and sat him down to talk, so, what the hell is wrong with you kid? Naruto got a tick mark on his head when Konohamaru clammed up and pulled his knees to his chest, okay, you can either tell me and we can talk this out, or I'll just do like my trainer did for me when I was a kid and beat the crap out of you until you forget why you're all mopey in the first place. Konohamaru paled when a mild amount of killing intent began leaking out of Naruto, what happened to you boss? You've been different since the Chunin exams. Naruto sighed, it's a long story and because I know what's wrong with you it might make you even more pissed off than you already are, for one reason or another. Now don't change the subject, what's your malfunction today? Konohamaru snapped at him, I thought you already knew. Naruto answered back snippily, I do I just want to hear it from you. Facing up to your own problems is the first step towards moving past them. Konohamaru looked up with tears in his eyes, what if I don't want to move past them? I don't want to move past my grandfather boss. Naruto stayed silent and let Konohamaru speak, everyone is moving on, going forward with everything. It's like he was never here, he was the Hokage boss. And everyone's going to forget about him. Naruto steeled himself, he really didn't feel like touching anything that involved Sarutobi with a 10-foot pole right then, but this kid needed him and being a ninja means doing things that you don't want to for the greater good, look Konohamaru, he was the Hokage for many years, longer than anybody else, he had a long reign, and he's done so much for this place. I'm sure everybody has a standout memory of him. Naruto then grumbled under his breath, Kami knows that I do. Naruto shook off that dark line of thinking, the point is that someone that has touched so many people can never truly just disappear. Trust me brat, chances are that they'll be talking about him long after we're dead. You can go up to just about any of the ninja in this place and the majority of the civilians and they can probably give you some stories. Konohamaru started drying his eyes, what about you boss? What kind of stories do you have of grandpa? Naruto held back a frown, I don't think you're old enough to hear about my story of the old man. Maybe one day I can tell you, but it's better that I don't right now. Naruto patted Konohamaru on the head, do you feel better now? Konohamaru nodded, are you going to cry a bitch around me again anytime soon? Konohamaru shook his head, good. Naruto picked the kid up and sent him off on his way. He made his way back to Tsunade's office where she had a mass of chunin picking up the mess left by Naruto going hard on the door. Seated behind what was soon to be her desk she smirked upon seeing the young shinobi enter, nice mess gaki. Why did you kick my door? Naruto raised an eyebrow. Two reasons, you would have done it yourself eventually and, honestly I've wanted to do that for years, that just gave me an excuse. Naruto took a seat as the last of the mess was cleaned and the door was put back. Tsunade took on a business face when the door was shut, so what's going on with you and Jiraiya? You weren't speaking to him at all on the way back. Naruto locked eyes with the older blonde, are you sure you want to hear this? It's not something really vital for you to know. And I'm also pretty sure it's a village secret, probably above me being the Kayubi Jinchuriki. Tsunade's eyes widened momentarily before she smirked, well I'm going to be Hokage now right? What's a village leader without a few dark little secrets? Naruto chuckled, get comfortable because you're going to be sitting there for a while asking me questions and stuff. Tsunade frowned and pulled a bottle of sake from the desk. Naruto sweat dropped, wow. You certainly stashed that quickly didn't you? Tsunade scoffed as she pulled out a cup, it's not mine smartass. Serutobi sensei left it there before I ever even got here. Naruto sharply inhaled breath, that's right, the old man did train you three twisted sanin didn't he? That might make this an uncomfortable conversation. He snapped his head around, no anbu guards. Tsunade shrugged, 
I'm not Hokage yet kid, I still have to get through coronation first. It's just us for now. Naruto kept silent as he thoroughly checked the room before he looked to Tsunade once more, so did Aero Senen tell you anything about me? Tsunade nodded, what do you know? Tsunade poured herself a cup, other than the stuff that I already knew he let me in on your base character and stuff. Apparently he left out the scary battle phase part. Naruto clinched his hands together as he set his chin on them, that's because he didn't know about it. I didn't used to be a goofy loud fuck up until a few years ago. I was more like I am now, calm, collected, focused, and I had something of a mean streak too. Tsunade looked confused, so your personality changed. How is this a secret? Naruto shook his head, it's not that my personality evolved, it's how it evolved. Haven't you noticed that I'm too good for my own good at fighting? I shouldn't have been able to stop Orochimaru's surprise attack on me back in Tanzaku Gai if I was just a genin, hell, even a chunin. I was spamming jutsus that I shouldn't know how to do and fighting on par with a junin level ninja. Tsunade flashed back to all of the things he had done since she had met him and then she realized. Flashback. Tsunade's eyes drifted over to him, so who's the brat Jiraiya? Jiraiya looked at Naruto, who was wearing an unreadable expression, minus the twitching, this is Naruto Uzumaki, my new apprentice. Naruto's eyebrows shot up, apprentice. Since when? Jiraiya smirked at the boy, since you signed the toad contract before the invasion kid. Congratulations. Naruto grumbled and placed his face on his hands, great, the guy that locked away my strength and skill wants to make amends and teach me how to fight again. XXX. Kabuto pointed at him accusingly, no way. From what I've seen and from the information on you you're nothing. A low-level genin. Naruto chuckled, well that's what the Konoha records had on one Kabuto Yukushi also if you'll recall. We all know how that turned out right Mr. Spy. If you were capable of it then why wouldn't I be? I didn't even have to join any ranks and keep suspicion off like you did, all I had to do was not get caught. Naruto tapped his finger on his head, I had the plans for your invasion all up here way back then. Every move you had planned out over the long term was all up here. All of your bases, the info that was listed on your cursed seal, the true nature of Orochimaru's immortality jutsu, it's all here. The only reason your invasion had even half of a chance of even getting off of the ground was because of some unfortunate business that ended with me getting my memory and abilities sealed off before I could tell the necessary people. End flashback. Tsunade looked at Naruto and locked eyes with him, taking note of the scar over his right eye and how he was patiently waiting for the point to hit her. There was something done to you back then, and Jiraiya was the one who did it. Naruto smiled faintly, you're half right. Aero Senen was the one who sealed me but it was ordered by another. Serutobi Gigi really screwed me over back then. Tsunade's jaw was hanging, Serutobi Sensei. Why, what happened to force him to seal you off? Naruto's eyes blazed over angrily, nothing happened to force him to seal me. I was injured during a covert mission, Aero Senen said he found me and brought me to the old man where they found out it was me. Apparently they thought I was some kind of threat too strong for my age to be left alone. They didn't even wait for me to regain consciousness before they took me and locked away my strength and speed, my skills, my jutsu, my knowledge, everything. Tsunade was enthralled with the story, so what happened then? Why did the seal break? Did one of them take it off? Naruto shook his head, I had my mind regressed back to the time when I was four years old for all intents and purposes, I had to learn things like how to read all over again. I was mentally behind everybody else in the academy and everything. I broke the seal during the invasion, and since then it's been a matter of picking up the pieces and relearning everything. Those three jutsu that I used against Kabuto, I have tons of those, those were just the ones that I had the time to relearn, not even master. Tsunade still had a question, why did Serutobi Sensei do it? Why did he think you were dangerous? Naruto leaned back in his chair, I can't tell you that. It would be a matter of total betrayal. It's not like it's that good of a secret, but let Aero Senen be the one to tell you, I'm technically not even supposed to exist if you catch my drift. Tsunade nodded, one more thing. Where do you think you rank in the overall roster of my active shinobi? Naruto shrugged, how should I know? It's not like I've fought any of them to find out or anything. 
Naruto pointed out at her suddenly, but fuck being a genin though. You know damn well I'm better than that, anything other than that will do right now. Tsunade smiled at him, noted. Now get out of my office, you're the only real ninja from this village that I've actually gotten to meet yet. She put away the sake and shooed him off. When he was out of sight she called out loudly, Shizune, call a meeting for me for all ninja the rank of Chunin and over after the coronation we have so business to sort out. XXX. Naruto sat on his bed back in his apartment. He had decided to stop looking for Danzo, if Danzo wanted to see him he could easily find him, it's not like it was hard anymore. He didn't need anyone to sort the whole mess out anymore, meaning that honestly there was no reason to look for Danzo. His original goal was to be a ninja for Konoha, Sarutobi had proverbially blocked one path with a boulder, but instead of complaining that the way had been blocked Naruto had followed the path the boulder had taken to find a completely new destination to find his own way towards becoming one. Danzo had never made it a secret that he thought of Naruto as a tool, an expendable soldier. While Naruto had more value than most if not all of his other operatives, when your house burns down you don't grab the stuff inside, you just run, and when Naruto was caught on the job and exposed Danzo had to wash his hands of him, it was all he could have done. Give them Naruto and cut your losses, the only thing a man like Danzo doing the things he was doing had as an option. He knew Jiraiya would be confronted by Tsunade about sealing him, he knew he'd tell her what he and Sarutobi had learned about Nei and try to color her opinion. But honestly, Loyalty only went so far as far as Naruto was concerned and being blacklisted by Nei pretty much got rid of his loyalty, if you don't want me, I don't need you, was the way he saw it. The best Danzo would get from him at this point was him keeping his mouth shut about Nei which was all he was going to do in the first place. Jiraiya's arrogance in his own ability to gather information kept him from ever asking Naruto what he knew about Nei, thinking that Naruto had been a young flunky and didn't have much information. It's always fun to have preconceived notions isn't it, not really smart though. Naruto knew quite a bit. He had been trained by Danzo almost personally and had information given to him by the man himself, no misdirection necessary, Naruto would never have broken to torture, it had been made sure of and tested thoroughly because Danzo never placed the seal ensuring he would be quiet about Nei on him. Therefore Danzo told him things, everybody needs at least one confidant. But that was not important either, he was now a Konoha ninja, no longer in Nei. He answered to another higher up and belonged to their forces now. Naruto groaned as he sat up in a meditative position. The last thought he had before slipping into his own mind was that he was still a weapon, he had just been lost and collected by another. XXX. Naruto opened his eyes to reveal himself standing at the door of his own apartment. Naruto sighed, well it's better than a sewer I guess. He opened the door and walked through his mindscape apartment to find a dog-sized fox with nine tails and a collar asleep on what was supposed to be his bed, obviously the Kyubi. The Kyubi's ears twitched as he drew closer and it sat its head up to let out a vulpine yawn, hello kit. I have to say, it's a major improvement over the sewer. Naruto sat on the bed next to the fox and looked over at the awakening biju, I can see you're enjoying it. It's still not as cool as it used to be though. If I want to see my own apartment then I sure as hell wouldn't come in here. The fox growled in comfort as Naruto shook his head with a faint smirk, so is my mind good enough to broker out the old deal again or what? Kayubi cracked open an eye and stood to walk over to Naruto, well since I can make physical contact with you again we can do this right now. Anything you want to add, anything you didn't like, you want to get rid of the trigger. Naruto raised his eyebrow, no I like the trigger, hell no. We're keeping that, that was always cool. Keep that, also you can still see and feel everything I do, you can talk to me, but I can still mute you. Spoil sport, Kayubi butted Naruto with its muzzle. Naruto kept reeling off deals, I get to retrain using your chakra, and I have to get ridiculously strong again, per the first agreement. I still have to kick the guy that helped the Yandaimi come up with the seal that imprisoned you in me in the balls, and I think I'll enjoy doing that more than you will. Am I forgetting anything? Kayubi scratched behind its ears, no not really. If you want to make another deal or something I'm always open to negotiations, remember that kit. And don't wait too long to use the trigger, you know I always liked that move. Naruto stood up and let the Kayubi lay back down on the bed, alright, I'm gone. 
Later you lazy ass fox. Kayubi batted one of its tails in acknowledgement as Naruto left the apartment mindscape. XXX. Naruto opened his eyes and sat up to reveal the hazy outline of the sun outside. Damn it, did I black out until morning? Naruto shakily stood up and went into his bathroom to help wake himself up. As he was brushing his teeth a knock came at his window. Spitting and rinsing his mouth he then walked over to the window in his bedroom revealing an anbu in a bear mask, Kuma-san. I must have slept through Tsunade Bachan's coronation right. The anbu nodded, Tsunade-sama wishes for you to meet her at the tower immediately. Naruto nodded, sure thing, just let me change clothes and then I'll go. The anbu used Shunshin to disappear from sight as Naruto shut his window. Upon changing and leaving his house Naruto was once again subjected to the usual looks of disdain and scorn from the villagers. Naruto went through a mental checklist as he walked towards the tower, I'm gonna get that guy, that guy, that bitch is screwed. Oh, that guy is getting fucked when I get free time. Naruto had not lost his luster for pranks and seeing as how he needed to vent on someone anyway why not take it out on the people that dislike you regardless. As he arrived in the tower he found the same Anbu from his house standing in front of the door of Tsunade's office, Hokage-sama is waiting inside Uzumaki-san. Naruto nodded and entered. Naruto found the office filled wall to wall with many of Konoha's high-level ninja. Naruto sauntered, pushed, slid, and mashed his way through until he reached Tsunade's desk, you wanted to see me Ba-chan. Tsunade glared at Naruto as she heard snickering coming from the back, yes brat. I asked for you to come today so that I could get a general idea of your promotion. I've asked these Junin here because they must know more of what you're capable of than I do. Naruto snorted, yeah right. Tsunade opened the floor for the others to voice their opinion on Naruto. Needless to say most had nothing too flattering to say about the blonde, the only thing most said that was actually good was that he had high reserves, and then the compliments dropped off sharply. Naruto could only stand silently and pondering that guy's getting it, that guy's getting it. Oh hell no, he called me what, that guy's getting fucked. Meanwhile the Kyubi was doing some musing of its own, you could kill that guy, you could kill that guy, what the hell. That guy wouldn't last more than 5 seconds against you, how is he getting a say in this? Kurenai then stepped forward to take her turn, Naruto has high chakra reserves and stamina, which lend themselves to him well when he uses cage bunch and no jutsu. Other than that, and an ability to think on his feet, however I cannot give him a good grade in the other facets of being a shinobi. He is usually reckless and quick to act before thinking, he has poor chakra control due to such high reserves, his taijutsu has almost no true form, he has no aptitude for genjutsu, and other than his aforementioned cage bunshin he has no true ninjutsu to speak of. In the back Aruka had to grit his teeth hearing all of these people speak about Naruto as if he was a burden on the program. Asuma pretty much agreed to the same thing leaving Naruto looking around, where the hell is Kakashi? Shouldn't someone have my back in here? Asuma looked at Naruto, good luck with that kid, Kakashi isn't going to show for this until we're three hours in. Naruto felt like slamming his head into something, a person or inanimate object, it didn't really matter to him. Tsunade noticed that everyone was done with their opinions and looked to Naruto, well we've heard from everyone else Naruto, so what about you? Do you have anything to say about what you've been told today? You have the floor. Tsunade shivered as a dark grin came upon Naruto's face. He turned to face all of his superiors, well speaking personally, fuck you all. As the jaws dropped of everyone in the room Naruto began walking around the room, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, not you Aruka sensei, you didn't say a thing. But yeah, basically, Fuck everyone with no real input or a true perspective based on real knowledge. He continued walking around the room, you say my jutsu list is pitiful, did you ever know if anyone tried to teach me any? Have you ever seen me fight other than the one time against Neji? You say my control is shoddy, well if you have enough chakra to make upwards of 1000 cage bunch and then I'd love to see you try and keep it up to snuff. You say my taijutsu sucks. Come and fight me and find out just how bad at it I am. Having an aptitude at genjutsu is kind of hard without someone teaching it to you isn't it? All of you love to talk about how much you've heard that I suck to make you feel better about your own teams, but none of you have even the slightest idea of what I'm capable of, 
And while I kind of like that sometimes, right now it's really starting to piss me off. Naruto finished and sat on Tsunade's desk calmly, I can see you all have something to say. So go ahead and say it. The room exploded with Junin and Chunin yelling at Naruto for his disrespect and begging Tsunade to discipline him. Naruto turned to look at Tsunade and shrugged when he saw her massaging her temple, well you said I had the floor. That means I can say whatever I want. Tsunade sighed in resignment, I suppose I dug my own grave on that one. Asuma calmly stared Naruto down, do you really think you're ready for a promotion kid? You didn't come off as a world beater during the Chunin exams. Naruto scoffed, whatever, and I suppose you'd rather have someone like Shikamaru be promoted then instead of me. Asuma blinked, actually yes, he showed great strategic thinking and combat savvy. Naruto rolled his eyes, yeah, and what will he do when he ends up going against someone that can flat out overpower him and disrupt his plans? He's just lucky Tamari got caught up in playing his game. If she really wanted to kill him she could have just ripped the tree he was hiding in up by the roots with her wind jutsu and crushed him. Hell I could beat Shikamaru, as a matter of fact I could beat your entire team if I had to. He looked at Kuranai, I could beat everyone on your team. Hell I beat Kiba with my chakra and reflexes disrupted an hour after finishing the second stage of the exams with no downtime. Naruto shrugged, you know what, as a matter of fact I could probably beat Guy's team too, I already beat Neji, Rock Lee's hurt and if he ever recovers will need rehab before he could step to me, and Tenten, I'll beat her the way Tamari did if she hasn't learned anything new. And don't even get me started on my team, those teams are apparently the best which means that there isn't a single goddamn genin in this entire village that can beat me. Tsunade spoke up before they all broke into another uproar, that's quite a statement brat. Care to back that up with action? Naruto smirked at Tsunade, do you really want me to put ten of your genin in the hospital? You sure you can spare that kind of manpower? Tsunade couldn't help but return the smirk Naruto was giving her, fine then. In one week you will fight Asumas, Kuranais, and Guy's genin in addition to the ones on your own team. If you can adequately impress then you'll be promoted to Chunin. She spoke again as Naruto opened his mouth, we'll handle anything further if you can get a promotion from this test. Kurenai spoke up, Hokage-sama you can't be serious. I don't know of any genin that can take on three other genin teams, let alone a rookie and the dead last of this year's graduates. Asuma nodded in agreement, the kid has never shown anything special, what makes you think that something like this is necessary? Ibiki stepped forward, having kept silent the entire time, this, dead last, as you so eloquently put it captured the case cage's children and took out an entire squad of Odo shinobi that had our own forces pinned down during the Suna Odo invasion. He at least deserves the chance to prove something to all of you that can't see past the titles that you all gave him in the first place. Naruto smiled, note to self, do not bomb scare Ibiki with horrible, guerrilla warfare ass pranks. Tsunade nodded, thank you Ibiki. She looked out at the other amassed ninja, I have personally seen this boy face down Orochimaru spy Kabuto Yukushi and come out on top. He even went head to head with Orochimaru himself and helped me and Jiraiya fight him off. If he is what you call a dead last then I'm glad that you didn't determine the skill levels back when I was a genin or else I would probably still be one. Naruto looked at Tsunade, so are we done? Because I would love to go and vent my frustrations right now. This entire meeting has pissed me right the fuck off. Tsunade sighed, language brat. And yes, that was all I needed. Be at the Chunin exam stadium at 10am next Monday for your fights. Naruto nodded and bowed to her before moving to open and jump out the window to begin racing along the rooftops. As soon as he left the office broke into a smattering of talk mostly centered around the audacity of Naruto and how, that demon brat, was going to get slaughtered next week. Tsunade finally got fed up with it all, silence. What does this look like, the Junin lounge? Get out. As they began to leave she called, Asuma, Kuranai, Guy, you three stay. They did as was told, the rules for the test will be roughly that he will fight each genin one by one. The other rules will be given on the day of the test. You can all get together to determine the order in which you want them to fight. You all need to inform your teams of my decision for next week. Prepare them well, trust me, they'll need every bit of training they can get. 
Asuma looked skeptical, it's just one genin Tsunade-sama. Even if we don't train them he couldn't possibly beat more than two in a row. Tsunade gave up and shrugged, it's your team Asuma, you can do whatever you feel you should with them. They're your responsibility, you're all dismissed. XXX. Naruto ran along the rooftops back to his home when a familiar presence landed behind him. Sasuke Tem, you're out of the hospital I see. Sasuke glared at Naruto's back, fight me Dobi. Dobi huh, Naruto didn't turn to face him, you can fight me in a week like everybody else. Sasuke looked at him in confusion, like everybody else. What are you talking about? Naruto shook his head, go find Kakashi and ask him. And while you're at it tell him I'm not going on any missions with you all until the week is up, maybe. Naruto disappeared in a swirl of leaves leaving Sasuke alone on the roof, he knows Shunshin. What have I been missing while I was in the hospital? How strong are you Dobi? XXX. Naruto once again sat in his apartment meditating silently when his eyes snapped open and he flung a kunai just in time for a poof to go off in his house. Ma. Naruto you should really be more careful with these things. Kakashi appeared holding the kunai as the smoke faded, you do know that we need to talk right. Naruto motioned for Kakashi to have a seat as the white-haired man did as directed. Naruto had moved to a more comfortable position on the ground to sit, so what do you need Kakashi? Kakashi sensei Naruto. Kakashi finished with an eye smile. Naruto snorted, the last person I called sensei actually taught me stuff. Go ahead and ask your question. Did Sasuke Tem talk to you yet? Kakashi sighed, yes, and I've also heard from Hokage-sama about your test. Naruto, do you really think this is a good idea? Do you truly believe that you're ready for such a promotion? I mean I can see that you finally dropped the orange and that scar on you is a new touch, but it takes more than that to be a chunin. Naruto smirked, then it's a good thing that I'll end up being more than a chunin when this is all over then huh? Kakashi's eye widened, you can't be serious. Naruto gazed at Kakashi seriously, I'm dead serious. I'm no genin level ninja. I wouldn't even call myself Chunin. Doing all of this kitty crap has dulled my edge. When you're systematically fed garbage that's what you eventually become, garbage. Kakashi was confused by the whole turn of events here. He expected to simply admonish Naruto for such a brazen act of disrespect, get him to cancel his test and be done with it, but the trend with Naruto these days seemed to be getting more questions and problems than answers and solutions, Naruto, what are you saying? All genin have to go through missions like the ones you take, we've been over this. Naruto chuckled, go and talk to Ba-chan, or even Aero Senen about my skill level, and listen to what they say. They've both got the closest inkling to what I can really do more than anyone, and the truth is, I'm not even as good as I should be. At first I thought it was just a work in progress, that if I just trained like I used to that it would come back to me, but I recently realized something. Naruto clinched his fists, I realized just how fucked up I am when I fought Kabuto when we went to go get Ba-chan, I was talking to the guy, talking, instead of just running through him and moving on to more important matters. I was casually engaging him like it was a game, like we weren't both there to kill each other instead of me running through him like a buzzsaw, which was what I should have done. I should have been kill first, ask questions later. I realized this when I noted that he had gotten back up from the Rasengan. Naruto pointed out the window at Konoha, it's this place. When I was little that never would have happened, I would have just killed him and moved along. This place's arrogance rubs off on you. The academy stresses stealth, but apparently stealth isn't good enough for a Konoha ninja once they graduate seeing as how I've yet to actually meet one that actively uses it in fights. Kakashi took offense to that, Naruto, Konoha's will of fire stresses protecting your fellow villagers and comrades above all else. The way you speak of combat, someone would be left out and could get injured, do you not remember my first lesson to you? Naruto scoffed, more like your only lesson, but who's counting? Yes Kakashi, but sometimes a weapon can protect better from the shadows than out in the light. You all specialize in open area fighting. You all are just glorified samurai with special techniques for the most part. Naruto sighed and stood when he felt Kakashi's glare on him, fine. Nothing I say is going to make you change the way you think so I'll just use the week off that I told you I was going to take. Naruto grabbed the weapons and items he sealed in his scrolls, his sword, and headed towards the door. 
Kakashi noted that he looked like he was going on a mission. Naruto where are you going? Naruto looked back at him, a smile faintly playing on his lips, I'm going to get something very important to me back. Don't even bother to try and look for me either. If you want to talk to me leave a message here or wait until I get back in on Monday to try to speak to me. Naruto stopped at the door before shutting it, you can try to find me, but you'll just be wasting your time, because if you can actually find me, then this week was a waste. Naruto shut his door, leaving one confused scarecrow inside. XXX. One week later, every single solitary soul in Kanahagakur no Sato was on edge and watching around every corner for their own safety. It seemed like the prankster of hell had returned with a fiery vengeance, only no one could prove it was him this time. The pranks over the course of five days were reminiscent of the days of yore, but only cranked up substantially for a select few others. Day 1. It was quiet. Nothing really happened to anyone on this day with the exception of one lone pervert at the hot springs, who was stripped, tied up, and had pervert spray painted on him before being thrown inside of the woman's baths, oddly enough he was already crying about his testicles before the women even laid a finger on him in retribution. Day 2. Day 2 was noted by a coded message sent out to the Hokage stating intent to pester and disorient the village into oblivion. It stated that she was not a victim and to handle this like she would anything else, so she simply pulled out a bottle of sake and went about her day. The first true shots were fired early that morning however when the owners of stores and restaurants in the villages inexplicably found their stock and inventory switched out with each other, everything, even the stuff in storage and lock up. Restaurants found food switched with clothing, leather, and other goods needed to make clothes, shinobi outfitters found their weaponry and armor replaced with flowers or canned goods. The entire day for them was spent figuring out who had what from whose store. Needless to say the merchants guild had more work to do on this day than any other. The walls of the hot springs separating the men's and women's sides were blown down randomly during the day, much to one side's delight and the other's chagrin. The academy had their target's bullseyes packed to the brim with mass amounts of kanai and shuriken stuck to them. Inside each classroom had the definition of stealth written on each chalkboard and each student's seat had a handwritten and copied pamphlet on how to develop true sneaking skills. No teacher at the school's desk was free of nasty trappage, ranging from silly string, to stink bombs, to paint and glitter mini cannons, with the exception of one Aruka Yumino who had a sealed, steaming bowl of ramen within his, chopsticks helpfully included. Day 3. At 5 p.m. in the evening the Junin lounge had been riddled with pranks. At the lounge the common area refrigerator was filled with urine samples swiped from the hospital, replacing all of the things that had been stored within. Starch was injected into the couch cushions making them hard, lumpy and uncomfortable. A space heater had been hidden in all four corners of the room, eventually making the room stiflingly hot, and unfortunately for all who were within at the time, the tops of the ceiling fan blades had been coated in itching powder. Day 4 Apparently the prankster had a wild hair up his ass on this day because he was getting ballsy enough to make attempts on the clans of the village. The Inazuka clan kennels were a miserable place to be, as the prankster had swiped a vial of pheromones from the vet's office and let it go within the kennels of the Ninkan. The poor, poor genin squads that were hired that day to walk the dogs were subjected to a sight better left to a twisted nature documentary of some sort. Entire teams were mentally scarred from the scenes. The Abarame clan was heckled repeatedly for hours by their Kikaichu repeatedly reacting to a delicious source of chakra being flared on their grounds in different areas randomly and blatantly. When they arrived on the scene to check it out they couldn't even find the faintest of signatures. The final massive flare-up however, scared the shit out of them, being something reminiscent of the night the Kayubi attacked 12 years ago. The Nara clan's deer had all been removed from their grounds and spread out all over Konoha. Now while the deer were just as easy going as the clansmen and wouldn't move too far from where they were placed, it was still, damn troublesome, for the ones sent out to retrieve them. The Hyuga clan grounds ended up having flash bomb traps set up over random areas of mass traffic. Doorways, hallways, the waiting room outside of the clan head's office, all of them and more. Every Hyuga ended up being, flashed, at least once during the day. Those that thought that activating their Byakugan while roaming the halls to find the bombs before they went off would be a good idea not only failed miserably, they ended up getting it worse that way. 
The most unnecessary and shining example of overkill that could be provided took place at the Uchiha clan main building where one Sasuke Uchiha resided. From the second his foot hit the floor that day he instantly tripped a wire that activated a mass of smoke bombs that filled the house room by room. As he went to brush his teeth he ended up heaving in the toilet due to the fact that his toothpaste had been switched with a tube of raw ground beef. All of Sasuke's shirts had an iron-on emblem of a heart on the front of them, even the undershirts. Seeing this he scoffed and decided since he was staying at home that day to train he didn't need a shirt. As he walked into the kitchen he was blasted with a hidden glitter cannon, glitter as mother fur so you just have to imagine this. When he opened his refrigerator door cologne was dumped on him from above. Now getting pissed off that his attempts to start the day kept ending with some kind of shenanigans he decided to head outdoors to practice with his kanai. Upon opening his door he was greeted with a sight that until this moment was something saved for his academy day nightmares. Standing out in front of his house was a sea of fangirls, and much to his horror a few fanboys, gathered from around the village. The day before this occurrence, flyers were put up all over Konoha advertising Sasuke Uchiha hosting a mystery contest of sorts at his home, with the prize, of course, being one day with him alone to do whatever. Now the sight of Sasuke Uchiha stumbling out of his house, smoke billowing behind him, without a shirt, glinting in the sunlight like some sort of new age vampire, coupled with the overwhelming smell of the cologne drenching his frame was, simply put, overkill for the young women there for their Uchiha-sama. Now Sasuke, not being slow on the uptake by any stretch of the imagination had his bishonen senses tingling the second he opened the door. And with good reason he took the staring, hungry looks of the females in attendance as his cue to get the hell out of there, taking off in a dead sprint towards town to find a place to hide and lose the raving fangirls. And this is where the cologne came in, because he could run, but smelling like an entire bottle of cheap-ass body spray, he damn sure couldn't hide. And so Konoha was subjected to the sight of Rookie of the Year, the last loyal Uchiha, Sasuke Uchiha, running around town frantically ducking and dodging attempts from other girls to make him theirs and win his love. Day 5. At the limits of their own sanity, nothing really happened on this day, it didn't have to. By now the citizens of the village were so frazzled by their week in hell that they ended up screwing with themselves. Prices in the general stores were dropped to all-time lows in a collaborative effort to lure out the prankster in question who they figured had to restock. They were wrong, and simply ended up getting mobbed all at once by artisans ordering raw materials in bulk after having everything ruined by the prankster, young kids rolling through with pockets full of cash and a sweet tooth and pretty much everybody in Konoha that liked to take advantage of a good deal. They lost more money than they really made, the prices were so low. The ninja sent to patrol and watch out for suspicious activities were at the end of their rope, so much so that in addition to turning on each other and hatching crack pot theories about who done it they had taken to harassing the general public. The bags under their eyes showing that they hadn't gotten any good sleep over this in days. By the end of the reign of terror the only people not touched by the spree of pranking in some way were, Tsunade herself, Shizune, Konohamaru and his three friends, the ninja outfitting shop owned by Tenten's family, Tyuki and Ayame Ichiraku, and Aruka Yumino. The final prank was harmless compared to the rest of the week's activities. It consisted of every face on the Hokage monument with white eyes painted on looking out towards the Chunin Exam Stadium with stupid grins on their faces, with sundry sweets and refreshments being painted around their faces. Over their heads hung a massive banner stating simply, 10 AM. Chunin Exam Stadium. Thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video be sure to like comment and subscribe as well as checking out the author on fanfiction.net.